Yo guys, what is up? Here's this week's Wyckoff Wednesday's video. I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, kind of supply and demand zones and how supply zones can turn into demand zones and how demand zones can turn into supply zones. So I'm going to be going over things, not quickly, but um, I'm going to try to cover a lot. So I'm going to be going through, you know, a pretty hefty amount of topics. If you guys like this video, drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. So Let's start by looking at Euro USD. Um, before I actually go into it, I want to draw up what I'm talking about. So for me, I like to call these like pivots. So not pivots in the sense or you know the typical notion of a pivot, but if you have something like this, okay? So you have a high, low, high, low, high, low, we're obviously creating demand on our way up. So this would be like a demand level, let's say price trades into it right here. Now, this would also be a demand level. Price is trading into it over here. So demand you guys know is just really a sell to buy. You can have it look a couple of different ways. You can have it look like this where this region is a sell candle. And then right next to that, or right after that, you get a buy candle. So I'll change this to green so you guys can see it better. So sell to buy right here. And then that forms an area of demand, right? So you can have it look like this, or you can have something that looks more like an area of consolidation. So you'll get a push up, pull back, and then this type of movement that price comes back to after it creates a break of structure over here. Totally messed that one up. So after you get a break of structure um, following that consolidation. So here's a consolidation, here's the BOS. We come back down to test it. Right, so we come back down to test it. That's an area of demand. So really those are the only two types of areas of demand that I look at. I don't really look at anything else. I just kind of want to keep everything simple. So going back to the example right here, we're just gonna suppose that these are sell to buy candles or areas of consolidation, doesn't really matter. And price is just trading back into them. So if that is the case, we're going to be looking for lower time frame confirmations to continue with the trend, right? So we'd look for intermediate highs and lows like that. Like that. And we would look for a break of structure like this. So a break of a level like this here to push down, mitigate, and then continue up, right? So that's kind of what we like to look for. But supply and demand zones, as you guys know, do not always hold. If they did, we would have single trend environments, meaning if demand was all that held like this, you would never see a, a change to a bearish trend, right? But we know that that's not how the markets work. So what happens when we do get a change in trend? Like when demand starts to fail and when supply takes control. So you can see this here. Let's say this fails to create a new high and ends up doing something like that, right? We get some type of movement like this. Well, this for me is what I like to call a supply pivot. So a supply pivot occurs when a demand area fails and supply takes control. So in this case, we, you know, we're anticipating a higher high from this because we were making higher highs and higher lows. So high, low, higher high, higher low, that's confirmed with this push here. And then we would expect a higher low to a higher high up here, but that is not what we got. What we ended up getting 
was a push or like theoretically, because this isn't a real chart example, what could happen would, would be a push up and a failure to make a higher high. So that's something that a lot of people talk about. Some people call these M formations. I don't really call them M formations. I don't like to think of it like that. I just think of it as, so this is the quote unquote M. I think of it as demand being in control and then supply taking over. The demand is holding, holding, and then it holds a little, but supply or selling takes control of the market. So what do we like to see when you know we we reach these levels? What do we like to see? So the answer that you guys can probably anticipate is that price would trade up into here and then short off because it's supply, right? That's not anything crazy. But the thing is, is when you get these pivot levels that change demand to supply, and obviously vice versa for supply to demand, which I'll cover, when you get these types of areas, they're very high probability because it is the point at which price is really, the delivery is exchanging hands, right? It's going from buyers to sellers. And this is the region that caused that exchange. So what do we like to see? We like to see a retracement up and a push back down. I can get rid of this stuff down here. So that's what we anticipate when we get a pivot from demand to supply or supply to demand, vice versa. It doesn't really matter because in the in the opposite case, just flip this upside down, the same idea applies. But I'm gonna I'm going to just keep talking about it in the case of demand to supply. So you can see that this is demand, demand, trade into that demand, fail to create a higher high, and then this turns into supply. So we'd like to see a retracement into this level. And we can be very confident that price will hold here because this is where the change occurred. This is where we actually changed from a bullish trend to a bearish trend. So looking at this, there are a couple of things you can do. Since these zones are high probability zones, you can take trades right off. That's the power of these zones. These zones do have a lot of merit, right? So trading into this and just placing a pending order at the open is in my opinion completely okay to do because this has this has backing this has institutional sponsorship we were following the order flow and that order flow ultimately failed to reverse trend right so these levels will have most of the time a really strong reaction or they'll offer a really good reaction so placing pending orders here is good that's fine now Placing pending orders like in regions like this, like this here, isn't really a good idea because if you do that, there's not really, there's no telling if price is actually going to respect. Yes, it's more likely that it does just because of the order flow of the markets, but it's not as likely as a level like this holding because this is where the exchange from buying to selling occurs so like get that engraved in your mind that this is where the legitimate change occurs in the market now with these you can say these are continuations on lower time frames at this area down here when you get that flip that's where this is where the change occurs, right? And so you can drop down to the lower time frames and do that, sure. But I'm saying from a higher time frame perspective, the continuation levels are less likely to play out because they don't have the power of that reversal zone. This is the reversal zone. This is this is where the banks had to collect the orders and close out their sell positions, right? And that's why price gets pushed back up, but they inject all this selling into the market to push it back down. So the, the volume that's trapped within here is very pertinent and it is very significant 
for you know the the institutional bodies to move the markets. So that's why levels like this end up holding more than levels like this. Again, this is kind of a reversal level. This is where we reverse trend from bullish to bearish. These are continuation levels right here, right? This is more likely to hold right here. And we'll call it a supply because that's what it is. I'm sorry. We'll call this a supply pivot right here. So supply pivot. Now I'll go ahead and talk about demand. So, and I'll try to find examples for you guys. This can look a bunch of different ways. This is just like the most basic, simple understanding that, that I can show you guys. Now, when you trade this, I'd like to like to say that when you trade this or try to trade it, you do want to see a break of structure. So the break of structure would be here because this is the last low that actually produced a higher high. So we need to trade past this to actually have a break of structure, right? So you wanna see a break here and then a retracement to go short like that. Oops, didn't mean for it to look like that. You wanna see a legit retracement up here to then short off. So BOS retracement, which that's not a new idea at all. That's something that we have always looked for. So I'm gonna invert my scale, talk about a change from supply to demand. And then I'm gonna talk about the different ways that this concept can kind of manifest itself or present itself on the charts. So if we look at this, this is obviously supply changing into demand. So if we have something like this, we are obviously in a bearish trend. So supply is in control. That's just a basic idea. If you're trending down, supply is in control. Trending up, demand is in control, right? So we can see that here. And what would we, what would we be looking for? We'd be looking for this BOS and a retracement down to push price back up, right? So retracement down, back into that area, BOS to confirm. And then we would anticipate lumps because we had a flip or a reversal in the market. So talking about it in this sense, it's rather obvious, but this is again, the most simple way to, to present this idea. So you can see supply is in control, supply is in control, supply is in control briefly, but then we buy price back up. So another way to think about this, and you can also just, again, flip the scale, for the other version where we're in an uptrend and we start heading into a downtrend, what happens here is supply briefly takes control right here, pushes down, but then price buys back up. This is, and this turns into kind of a sell to buy candle, right? And then we anticipate a push down, a break of structure to the upside. Right, so this is a sell to buy that we would anticipate price coming into. Like I just said, sorry for repeating myself. It's the same idea as this. this is, and then this would be a buy to sell that we would want price to trade into. And this is a supply pivot. So what do you think we would call this? If this is a supply pivot, this would be a demand pivot, right? Demand pivot. So demand pivot here, and we expect price to retrace. Continue higher, like I just mentioned. So this is the most basic example of this, as you guys know. Now I'll talk a little bit about variations and kind of different ways you can see it. So if you have something like this, This is just a slightly different, smaller, you know, example. It can come in all shapes and sizes. Like this is still the supply pivot, right? This is where demand or where you would anticipate demand on holding. You would anticipate demand holding here, but then we end up reversing off of that, right? Because we trade in, trade up, and push down. So the, whatever demand was in here 
was not strong enough to push price up and the supply was much stronger. In other words, the amount of orders, the selling orders here is much greater than the buying orders here. So we get that little reaction to the upside and then the supply is too strong, right? So these are the last buy orders that were injected into the market. And then we would expect price to trade up into those to mitigate out of them, right? Just a natural expectation. It's no different than setting an expectation with a buy to sell or sell to buy kit, because essentially that's what these are. However, they're happening in very specific places. This buy to sell happened in a very specific spot. It happened within a demand zone. So the, that gives it more merit or a higher chance of holding than if it were to happen like this. This is a buy to sell right here, right? <clears throat> now with this, yeah, it is likely that it'll hold because it, it is with the trend, but continuations, most of the time, unless you get a confirmation, do not hold. You'll see this, you'll see like that, a wick passed and then it will go down because it needs to grab the liquidity resting above this high. So placing or limit orders here does work, but it is not wise. However, with something like this, I have no problem placing a trade up here because it happened, this buy to sell happened in a very specific zone. That specific zone, again, is within a previous demand, right? Previous demand, this buy to sell, not really in a specific zone. Sure, it could have mitigated something over here, but that is not as strong as causing a change in the trend. That's really what this whole idea is. And when I say a change in trend, it's all relative. I'll go into a couple more examples, but you guys can see this caused a reversal in the trend. This was a high, low, high. We had a little buy up and then the supply took control here, causing a break of structure happening within the demand level. High probability zone right here. This is a high probability trading zone. These buy to sells are high probability if you can get a confirmation within them because they don't really happen at a significant level. Yeah, they can mitigate something, but they don't really have like a cause and effect relationship. You can't look at those and say indefinitely kind of what it caused, but with something like this up here, this caused a break of structure, this buy to sell caused a break of structure, right? So this has, an, it has a legit, a legitimate effect in the market. Yeah, you can say this created a lower low, which is true, but when you see mitigations like this, they typically will end up functioning as liquidity. So when you see mitigations like this, you'll typically see price just kind of run through them and take out highs like this here. If there's a high over here, it would take this one out as well. They just turn into points of liquidity. So now moving on, you know, after this discussion of looking at mitigation buy to sells and, you know, kind of flipping or reversal of trend buy to sells like this, the idea is these are high probability buy to sells. These are not high probability buy to sells. They are very different. And the idea is not really the same in terms of order flow and how the institutions are looking at price. For here, the institutions look at this as liquidity for the future. But with this, this has a true cause relationship. And I mean, here, causing a reversal in trend is more significant than causing a continuation because the banks were maintaining the buying orders all throughout here, but they had to sell off to invalidate these buys. Here, that's not the case. They just push price up and then sell off and follow the trend. So the orders that were injected in here are not as important or pertinent as the orders here because this causes a change and it makes it causes price to begin respecting supply 
not the demand here. It's just going to keep respecting supply. So it's it's more anticipated than this. But when you see this, this is a high probability zone. So talking about a couple more examples, something like this, high, low, high, and then I'm going to do this. So this would be a really good point of interest because when we when we have swing points in the markets, they're either buy to sell or sell to buy candles, right? Because we create, swing points are created by rapid up movements and then down movements or down movements and up movements. So this is a rapid up movement before a down movement here. Like that. So, this is a buy to sell. We respect it and then push through it and create a higher high. This demand caused this supply to fail, right? This was a legit supply level. Any buy to sell or sell to buy candle is a legitimate demand or supply region, okay? They are both legit in their own right. And it depends on the trend on, you know, kind of the trend determines what's going to hold. Like this uptrend would invalidate or make the supply less likely to hold than if you had something like this because price is respecting demand. So you expect it to continue respecting that demand, right? But like here, why would you expect this supply to hold? Because the market has been respecting supply in a downtrend. So you base your expectations off of what price has been doing. And if it's been respecting supply, guess what you're gonna anticipate on it doing? You're gonna anticipate on it respecting supply, right? So if you have that notion in mind, you can look at this region of supply and tell that it is unlikely to respect because we've been respecting demand in an uptrend, right? So we can anticipate this on failing and what causes this to fail. And by the way, guys, I'm sorry if you hear that noise, I can't really do anything about it. But basically what caused this supply to fail? This demand caused that supply to fail here. And it also created or caused a break of structure to the upside. So this is a BOS, continuation BOS to the upside. So BOS to the upside. And then where would you expect price to trade into? Based off of everything I've been talking about, I've repeated myself a million times. Would you expect it to hold here or here? Let me get rid of this. The answer should be obvious. You would expect it to hold here instead of down here because this sell to buy or demand area has legitimate merit from the market, right? It caused the supply to fail. It led to the higher high. That is the demand pivot. This is the demand pivot. This is a buy to sell. This is the demand pivot. And remember, or kind of pick up on the idea that a demand pivot is just a fancy word for a sell to buy that happens in a specific region. That specific region, right? is at a previous area of supply. This is the demand pivot here. This was just a sell to buy. The more probable zone is at that demand pivot because again, it caused the supply to fail and is what really caused the higher high. The swing point down here did not really cause the higher high. This is the fuel that gave us that higher high. This did not give us that higher high. This gave us this push up, the consolidation, and then the consolidation or demand region is what actually caused us to push higher in price. So did that level, did this level, this demand pivot cause a reversal in trend? No, it caused a continuation in the trend, but it caused the supply to fail. So when I'm looking at price, I'm gonna focus on supply and demand first. So I'm gonna look at what price is doing. Is it respecting demand? Is it respecting supply, right? Look at what it's doing and then base 
everything, all your analysis off that. You also need to look at the structure of the market, obviously, but base your, your analysis off supply and demand and then look at the supply that makes the demand fail or the demand that makes the supply fail. So like this here, this is supply. What demand caused it to fail? This demand caused it to fail because we pushed through it and we created a higher high. So I hope that kind of makes sense with the flips. I really like to see this more. This is a really good uh, model for taking, uh, I can't think of the word, continuations, sorry, continuation trades. This is the best way to take them because it's again, an institutional backing. Yes, there's institutional backing at swing points, but there's more institutional backing at regions where you get a pivot in price. So I can find a couple of on chart examples for you guys. Let me invert my scale. I was this barely, barely missed. It missed by a couple pipettes right here. Missed by like three pipettes, which is really annoying, but it's whatever. This would have been a layup of a trade, but it is what it is. Um, so let's try to find a couple of flips on this chart here. So on this chart, we had, here's a really clean, clear example. And an uptrend, right? Clear uptrend. And we have this little demand region. So remember what I said, guys, any sell to buy or buy to sell is a valid region for a demand or supply. So this is a sell to buy. So this is demand. Now look at what happens. We trade in what caused this demand to fail. This supply, this buy to sell. What does price trade into? Price trades into that supply and drops down, right? So that is really a perfect example of everything that I've been talking about in this video. This is, I mean, literally to the T, exactly what I wanted to show you guys. So clear uptrend, right? Now we do kind of get our reversal here. This was a some wonky price action, but um, you can see the idea with price turning you know, turning demand into supply or supply into demand. This is a demand to supply here. And if I want to find, you know, the opposite example, it would look like this, right? It looked like this. If this was supply, we trade into it, push down, have a sell to buy, demand pivot, and then we trade back into it and push up. So I hope that kind of makes sense, guys. I'm going to end this video here. If you like it, share it, like it, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you, guys.